First of all, what is the Yellow Vest movement? You might have seen uh, the, the picture from France, this big protest. So it started in France in, um, in November 2018 and still ongoing. Um, and it all started with an online petition um, against a new uh, fuel tax, uh, but it grew into something much bigger uh, about uh, social inequalities, unemployment, and more generally against uh, Macron's government. Um, but the Yellow Vest is not only uh, a French movement, it actually spread uh, all over the world. As you can see here, some headlines. So in Canada, Serbia, Israel, Egypt, Australia. So it, it was really all over the place. And often this movement have been uh, grouped under the same Yellow Vest banner, as if they would be somehow interconnected with each other. But actually, they are rooted in, in a very local context, and they crystallize different local issues. As you can see here, sometimes opposite camp were also uh, marching with Yellow Vest. In the case of the UK, it was at the same time the pro-Brexit protester and the anti-austerity protesters. And it was the same in, in Serbia and Germany, far right and far left uh, protesters. So the adaptation uh, of the movement to local problematics makes it much more localized than globalized. And it also resonated uh, in countries where there are few street protests, like Finland. Uh, when I say to people that I'm studying uh, the, Fre the Finnish Yellow Vest, they are telling me, but I didn't see any protests in Finland. Actually, there were some, some protests. Uh, for instance, in, in front of the Finnish parliament, uh, in front of the French embassy, and in several locations ar around the country. But of course, uh, it was a rather small movement, and the mobilization happened mostly online. Uh, several uh, Facebook groups were created, and they are still active nowadays, with people uh, posting on, on a daily basis. Uh, so one might ask, why do I study the, the Finnish Yellow Vest? Because it's not uh, only about the Yellow Vest per se, but it is also about the importance of uh, counter media in Finland, how it has been growing in the past few years. And it's also about the new grassroots online mobilization and also about the localization of crisis discourses on which right wing populism uh, prospers. Um, the the self proclaimed um, ye Yellow Vest uh, movement. Um, described itself as a movement of ordinary uh, people, uh, ordinary Finnish citizen, and that is a very common um, denomination all over the world. And the, the Finnish Yellow Vest uh, perform a very strong uh, sense of crisis. Um, they are, for instance, saying that, I quote, Finland has known a long, long period of despair, and they mention, for instance, poverty, slavery, chaos, insecurity. So they are bringing a very bleak vision of uh, Finnish society. Um, and the Finnish Yellow Vest uh, movement is also uh, spreading uh, a lot of content from uh, counter media outlets. So by counter media, I mean uh, outlets that are explicitly opposed to the mainstream media and to the establishment uh, in general. And for instance, when they cover uh, the, the French Yellow Vest movement, they use only, as you can see on the slide, the coverage from RT France, Russia Today France, which, as we know, is a pro-Russian uh, countermedia outlet. So, among others, they are really using uh, this countermedia to, to describe what the Yellow Vest are doing all over the world. And they describe their enemy, I quote, the globalistic elite, so-called cabal, which means uh, for them, the government, the Finnish president, uh, and of course, the Finnish mainstream media uh, that is described uh, as propaganda. For instance, in this article that they are sharing from Vasta Valkea, uh, talking about the mainstream media as propaganda. Uh, and in Finland, uh, there is a striking lack of research on the Yellow Vest movement in general, and basically on the Finnish Yellow Vest movement. Uh, but it is really important to study um, how and why the Yellow Vest 
also spreading in a country like Finland, while being largely omitted by the media and the academia. Uh, and researching these movements is really crucial, and understanding their complex uh, ideological linkages is really crucial because there are more and more of this global transnational movement that are happening all over the world and they need to be studied more carefully. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Quenel. Uh, what do you think are the main differences and also similarities uh, between the Finnish and the French Yellow West movement? Yes, according to some researchers, uh, basically there are not very much similarities between these different movements. They are saying that basically they are using the yellow vest, but they don't share very much in common. And I don't fully agree with that because I believe that there are quite strong similarities between these different movements. Of course, they are different also, but there are some things that we can notice that are quite, quite the same. And if we take the case of the French and Finnish yellow vest, there are some similarities, for instance, they have a very strong uh, anti-EU sentiment and it's something that you cl clearly see from the original French yellow vest and it's something that is very strong as well in, in Finland. And for instance, also, they have uh, a strong resentment against the elite, as I was mentioning earlier. So it means at the same time the political elite, but also the intellectual elite. So it's something that it's us, the people, against the elite, against the people who they, they don't understand us, they are working against us. So this kind of resentment is, is very strong in, in, in both countries. And for instance, of course, the mistrust uh, in the mainstream media is very strong in both countries. And it is really, as you can see on that slide, it really saying basically they are lying to us, it's propaganda. Only alternative media can tell you the truth about what is going on. But there are also some, um, some differences. For instance, in France, uh, as you know, perhaps there has been um, a lot of police violence during this demonstration. A lot of people were uh, injured. So there is a lot of uh, hatred against the police. And it's something that you don't really see in Finland. As you know, the police is quite trusted in Finland and it's usually portrayed in the counter media quite positively. Uh, and also, I think one of the main differences is that in France, there is no uh, nativist ideology and no welfare chauvinism. Mm. Uh, and also the anti-immigration sentiment is not very strong in France, but it's something that you can see quite a lot in the Finnish case. Uh, and you can see a lot of content from, from the Finns party and the Swedish Democrats, for instance. Are they a lot in contact, for instance, the French Yellow West and the Finnish, Finnish ones? There has been some contact, yes, uh, but I think it's mostly that they are trying to emulate. So they, they do post a lot of content from France because, of course, they are the model mm. and mm. They, they do uh, look what is going on in France and they take it as a model. So there is this emulation more maybe than some kind of strong bond between the countries. But for instance, they don't have a, a, an international Yellow West media or anything like that? No, they don't. But they, they are international Facebook groups that are really active and they do cross-share content. Uh, so th there is a lot going on between them, but not really like a media that would be shared. Uh, so why do you think the movement uh, has spread like this globally? I think Very one, quickly. Yeah, one of the main reasons is uh, the yellow vest itself because it's very easy to recognize, it's bright, it's quite easy to, to find in the shop, it doesn't cost much, it's very visible. So I, I think it, it was really a great symbol for a lot of people to, to use and, and share, basically. Even if the original meaning of the, the yellow vest in France has been lost, because in France uh, you need to have it in your car, it's mandatory by the law. So it, it was a symbol that everybody has it in their car, so it's easy to put on. So in different countries, of course, the law is different, but still they use the same, the same symbol. And I think also one of the reasons is that when you wear a same symbol, uh, it, it makes the movement uh, appear uh, bigger than it is, because there is this recognizable symbol. So it attracts more attention from the media, and also in terms, it means that it fuels the perception that the, the protests are much bigger than they are. Uh, and of course, I think one main reason is also the simplicity of the message mm -hmm. behind the yellow vest. It's basically, people have had enough, uh, we are struggling, uh, we want to voice our opinions and our concerns, 
And these concerns can, can be very different. It can be in some countries the taxes, in some countries immigration, within the same country it can be both, or capitalism. So it's really easy symbol to take uh, to express different kind of issues. In Finland, all the, um, all the kids in the daycare have those Yes, I've noticed there were very funny memes of yes. the little kids <laughs> wearing the yellow vest. Yes. Um. Yeah, in the end of the pr presentation you said that uh, this uh, phenomenon needs to be uh, researched more. So what do you think we should study uh, next regarding these movements? Uh, what is really important is that um, we can observe that there are more and more of this movement, uh, as you know. So for instance, of course, there are, they are var various types of, of this movement. But if we think uh, in the past few years, for instance, there has been Occupy Wall Street, uh, the Arab Spring, the Taiwan protest. So there's been a lot of this movement. And obviously, there is something happening. And we need to be aware of that and try to understand where it's coming from and what does it mean. Uh, of course, th this movement are n cannot be put in the same category. Uh, they have different roots. But still, they are this kind of international movement that become transnational because they are adaptation of this movement. So for instance, Occupy Wall Street had uh, a variant in, in, in France. And if we think, for instance, of the Arab Spring, it started in Tunisia, but then it spread in many countries. So there is this element of starting from one country, but becoming transnational and becoming localized. So it's something that is quite new, I think, and it's something that really we should pay attention to. And, uh, and also one point that is really interesting that we have noticed lately is that different movements can also join forces. So, for instance, uh, the Yellow Vest in, in Finland, they have recently joined forces with the Fixit movement. So we see that they have this connection that happens. So they have these synergies between the movement on the international level that really need to be acknowledged uh, and studied. And witnessing, uh, we are witnessing a phenomenon that is taking more and more importance. And one of the latest examples are all these anti-mask marches mm -hmm. that have been organized, as you have seen maybe the footage from Germany when there were a huge amount of people marching. And this has been growing in many countries against, uh, they are saying we, they are taking our liberties and, and they force us to wear the mask and the corona doesn't exist and, and so on. So this is one of the latest examples of this kind of movement that has been also spreading and that has been capitalized partly by the far right. So I, I really believe that uh, it is a gold mine for social scientists and it really needs to be, to be studied more carefully in the future. Yeah, definitely. Sounds very interesting. Thanks a lot. Thank you.